believe that we're already in November and it's uh, you know the the speedway down to Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and all that. Um, but you know it's been a great yeah. year. Really glad to have you guys here with me. Um, the ones that are here are live, awesome. Looking forward to connecting with you um, at, as we go through a couple of these examples. And uh, for those of you who are listening on replay, always love to have your participation too. And so uh, this is our monthly mastermind where we go over um, uh, deals. So the standard disclaimer, um, this is just uh, my opinion only for educational and entertainment purposes only. Um, always consult, do your own due diligence and um, can, you know, consult your own professionals. So I thought, you know, once in a while something comes up right um, very spontaneously and this was a, f a phone call slash email that I got from a gal. You can see she wrote me, I guess that was two days ago, uh, Owner Finance Dilemma. She uh, got me on the phone and uh, then followed up with this email. Um, and I thought it would be great for us to work over together and see what you guys think. She's looking for a solution. She says, hi Don, thank you for speaking with me earlier today per our conversation. We relocated out of state from a home in Kansas City, Missouri that we mortgaged for 105000 at 5.5%, 30-year fixed. So they, they bought this home thinking that they were um, settling in and then they got a job transfer. There are approximately 22 years left on our FHA mortgage. Acquaintances from church had an interest in renting our home for $900 a month and moved in when we left in 2012. They have lived there since that time and are now interested in purchasing our home from us utilizing owner financing. They have no money for a down payment and do not feel that they could obtain a mortgage on their own as they let their previous house go back to the bank, so they have no credit. Except for a few instances, they have consistently paid their rent when due over the course of their occupancy. We are excited that they want to purchase the house as we are not making anything on it. Basically, it's barely covering itself. There's no positive on it, but they don't have to go negative either so far, right? <laughs> Until some big re maintenance bill comes through. Um, and uh, let's see, we're not making and have had to continue maintenance and repairs, but on top of having no down payment, they are asking us to reduce the monthly payment from 900 down to 600 so that they can afford any issues that arise. So just without going any further, uh, comments, questions? So this is a nice church friend who has no money that has been paying 900 rent. Now they want to own it for zero down and drop the, the P&I down to 600. Any comments? Yeah, if they have no money, they need to be praying more. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You are so funny. <laughs> um, you know, there, there's such thing as like reputation equity or character equity, but I think this is just taking it a little too far. I mean, I think they're, you know, it's pro they probably got in without any security deposit on top of that is my guess. But, uh, you know, if, if, uh, yeah, so they've been paying 900 rent, they're barely making it. Now they're going to have to go negative $300 to let these people own it. Does that at all make sense to anyone on the call? No. No. So I just said, uh, you know, for one thing, no, and for the second thing, no, and third, no. Anyhow, well, just because it's like it's one thing if they want to do a favor for someone, but, you know, it's not, they're, it's not exactly like, hey, we're going to hook these people up and take a loss make a loss on our end to benefit them. Some people want to do that, but this wasn't her situation. She just thought, God, we sure want to be done paying for maintenance on this thing. They don't like those surprise, you know, repair bills, which I totally get. So she's kind of at the desperate stage where she's like, anything, can you please get me out? Um, yeah, so can you please just get me out? And they're there, so she's going, is this something I should do? They were hoping I would say yes. So anyway, we put a lot of money into repairs and updates, but it's not in a, the greatest of neighborhoods. We were naive. Okay, dumb, but here we are. To sell the home today, we'd probably only bring in 70000 not including agent fees. We still owe 82000 So they bought it for probably 110 or 115 and they have a 105 loan. They have paid it down to 82000 
but it's only worth seventy thousand now, not including closing costs. So then they now they live out of state and they're very tempted by the easy route, but we have lost so much money on this property that we want to get out without going deeper. Is there a way out? Should we finance a down payment for them? We are truly looking for answers. So um let, let me just pull up a calculator just because this is called calculator practice. So um but anyway, Ken, you know, what would you do? I would tell them to do a short sale. Cooperate, do a short sale. You're going to get hit a little bit because you're underwater. The bank might only lose fifteen or twenty thousand. You're going to get hit a little bit, but if you cooperate, a short sale is a lot better than a foreclosure. And you go on with, with your life. Don't don't give them any more money. You don't. Nothing's going to be out of your pocket. A short sale is going to just happen at some point, and uh, somebody's going to uh, you know pick up a little bit better piece of property for a little bit less than what it's worth, which is okay on a short sale, and uh, life goes on, and uh, don't keep on financing a church friend, so to speak, and get yourself in more problems. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is just, if they had a down payment, we're, it's different, right? Uh, yeah. but, but really, why give a, you know, it's already bare, going negative for them. You can see I plugged in this, their original loan just to see what their P&I, principal and interest yeah. is. So PV is 105, here I put in the interest rate, uh, 360, so that's 30 years, and then it's fully amortizing, so there's no, no balloon, the future value is zero, we calculate for the payment. It's almost 600, and then they have taxes insurance on top of that, so if they're getting, you know, uh, what, what's the average taxes and insurance, like 125 bucks, do you think? Yeah, somewhere in that area there, too. And you have to understand, too, Tom, that if somebody anywhere in the United States, it doesn't matter where, if they cannot afford or only afford $600 a month for one house, for a complete house, something is not right in that family. They're not doing something right. That is, like, as dirt cheap as you can get. If they're having trouble doing that or want to go from 900 to 600 that's a red flag as well. That's just, that's just dirt cheap rent. Right, and and I, I don't blame them for asking. You never know until you ask, right? It's no, there's nothing wrong with them asking, no, uh, not because at all. they I'm sure they don't understand the underlying financing probably at all, right? They're just going, hey, they move out of state, they they don't want to pay for anything. Let's see what kind of deal we can work. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. No. So it, it, you know, so but yeah, if I'm I'm really assuming they can afford more, that they're just trying to you know. But you can see if PITI. Is 721, and she gets in 900 month a month in rent. She has 178 big fat cushion <laughs> for when the water heater goes out, or you know those things need to be repaired. You know, heaven forbid something. I guess they did a lot of updating, so that there's not a lot of repairs at this point. But you know, at some point there will be. So basically, it's just barely, barely squeaking by. You know, and if she's only get, getting in 600 a month, um, she still it still washes, but um, but the no down payment is a problem because uh, if they decide they can't afford even six hundred a month and they default, now she's got to pay legal fees to get them out, and they can you know drag that out. I don't actually know how long someone can drag out a Kansas City foreclosure. Anyone have intimate knowledge of that on the call? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's for uh, judicial or non-judicial. I think it's a. Uh, it's uh, nine. It's nine ju judicial. I know that part. It is. So it, it yeah. should be you no know, within a six-month period. That sound right to you, Kioka? About six months. Yes. So yeah, they I don't know the time frame, but I know that it's not ju judicial, and it takes <laughs> less than a year. Yeah. So non-judicial can go anywhere from I think Texas in forty-five days to some. Yeah. Year. Year, a year, but with an average like California, I think it can take us six months really. Realistically, more like seven or eight to get someone fully. Yeah, I think California is at the height, even though it's non judicial, it's still at the height. Takes longer than most. So, anyway, yeah. that, so now they have more potential headaches down the road. Instead of easing their risk, they're adding to it, in my opinion. Because this family is trying to get too good of a deal, and which means to me, if they have no down payment, then they're not used to saving money on a monthly basis. And when you own a property, you know there's these things that come up. So you have to have some, um, you know, excess reserves that you can call on when you need it, or or else what will happen is they'll say, hey, 
you know, we had to fix something at the house. Uh, can we skip this month's mortgage payment? You know?